Among the throng of students at Woodson High School, one couple stands out, and everybody's talking about them. Have you heard of David and Lisa? Do you, do you know a David and Lisa? Who? Oh, that's the homecoming queen and qu uh, king. I'm sorry. I do you know any David or Lisa? I, uh, Lisa Weir. Do you know a David and Lisa? No, I don't. You've never heard of David and Lisa? David and Lisa. Have you heard of it? No. No? Who's David and Lisa? Did he win Idol? No. Do you think he was in a Megan Idol? Okay. Who? David and Lisa. <laughs> David and Lisa? I don't know. What is that? Isn't that a play? Have you heard of David and Lisa? Yes, I have. It is, in fact, the Woodson High School Spring Musical. And what is it about? It is, I believe, and this might not be exactly right, but I know that it has to do with two people, David and Lisa, who have mental problems. Yes, David and Lisa is Woodson's spring theatrical production. It's a powerful two-act play based on an award-winning film of the same name about two high schoolers, David and Lisa. But it's not your typical boy-meets-girl story. These teens are each battling a separate but equally serious mental disorder. Hello, kiddo. Kiddo, hello. Playing Lisa, Erica Messenger. All stories are love stories in, in some form or another. Um, I think that David and Lisa is not just you know your typical love story where it's about uh, romantic love between two people. It's about uh, learning to love yourself. Um, David goes through an incredible journey where he just thinks he's crazy and messed up and can't be fixed and. Um, but in order to grow and change and get better, he has to learn to love himself. And Lisa also, before the show started, I did a lot of research um, on uh, dissociative identity disorder, which is what Lisa has, also known as multiple personality disorder, and uh, what kinds of things like trigger it or cause it. Lisa is aware of the fact that when she gets anxious, uh, or overly excited, uh, Muriel comes out. And Lisa is, basically she's been stuck at five years old. And Muriel has been the one to grow up and who is now 15. Muriel has become sort of like an older sister to Lisa, um, trying to protect her. But Lisa wants to get better, she wants to grow up. And she knows that in order to do that, she has to stay herself. And so, the rhyming is a compulsive ritual that uh, brings her anxiety down and so she believes that when she rhymes and the people around her rhyme, then Muriel won't come out and she can stay herself. Uh, the show is about uh, this character, well this character David Clements. I happen to play the role of David Clements. Uh, he's a uh, only son, teenage son of wealthy parents and uh, he is tortured by his mania against being touched. Um, he has an extreme phobia against being touched. He will freak out. Um, he believes that he will die if he is touched. Um, he also is a high OCD, uh, has a very high level of OCD. Um, everything has to be neat and ordered for him. He always wears perfectly tailored suits. You know, uh, By playing the character, I've become a little more like him, sadly. Uh, he's a, but he's very complex. I mean, it's the whole thing about you walk down the hallway, and everyone's like, oh my god, Stuart, I'm gonna touch you, I'm so funny. So it's actually got the phobia of, like, I can touch people just like normally, but when people like touch me randomly, I'm like, don't touch me, jeez. <laughs> and so it's, it, it helps a little bit. I think everyone can find a part of one of the characters that they can relate to. Um, Lisa's very childish, and we all have an inner child, and, uh, David likes to be in control all the time, and I think that's something that a lot of people can relate to as well. We all like to be in control of the situation. It's the kind of show that makes you think when you're watching. You can't just watch just for pure entertainment. You watch and you get totally sucked into the story, and it makes you think about the way you act around other people and the way um, society acts. 
when put with different kinds of people. Poor child. What's wrong with her? Schizophrenic. You know, crazy. Doesn't it upset you to be around children like that? Well, I shouldn't. I'm crazy too. Now don't say that. You'll break my heart. Now you've got some problems, but... I've got bats in my belt for you, or I wouldn't be here, would I? You know, mental illness and, and how people approach it and how people deal with it, um, I think is very relevant in, um, in our school since we have the a SEDS um, center and, and a lot of kids, you know, with some difficulties. Um, I also think that mental there's been a stigma attached to mental illness mm -hmm. for a long time. I've, I've always been fascinated by the play. My, my early teaching career, I taught special ed, I taught um, emotional disabilities and learning disabilities in elementary school. So I've always had a, a passion for that. Um, I think that uh, another reason I wanted to choose that was the, the demographics of the group as a whole. Um, I never look at a particular kid and say I want to do a show because I want this kid to be featured. But I take a look kind of at the collective um, group and they've done a lot of comedy, they're really good at it. Um, but I thought that this would be a really good challenge for them, a really good way for them to, um, to extend themselves and challenge themselves. I'm Jen Brattle and I'm the lighting designer and tech director for David and Lisa. It's kind of a dark show in theme. Um, what, what do you have planned? Yeah, I mean they're at a institution and it's the late 60s and um, I had this idea, just very harsh, very uh, bright. I mean, not. I like the contrast of light and shadow, especially in a show like this, where you have a contrast between, like, um, I guess, kind of struggling with some sort of mental issue and trying to fit in. And um, I definitely want to play around with lots of shadows on the face. Not like so it gets creepy, but just enough so that it's a little bit uh, off. Actually, it was during Snowmageddon I came up with the concept of the, of the show. Um, and I, I had, you know, I'd read, obviously, I'd read the script several times. And, um, and it occurred to me that um, the characters in the story with mental illness, um, it was like navigating through a maze. Uh, so that was m my concept for the tech for the show and the set design um, was to develop a maze where the walls literally moved around David and as he tries to you know, navigate his way through, um, through his life and through his problems and, and um, so we have 16 walls. Um, they all, uh, well, all but seven of them, nine of them move, uh, many of them move a lot. Uh, it's also, uh, it also helps to transition from scene to scene. There are 20, 24, 52 scenes in the show. It almost reads like a film when you're reading the, um, the script, it almost reads like a film. Um, there are some scenes where the scene is 30 seconds long and there aren't even words. So, um, so in terms of going from scene, moving from scene to scene to scene, you can't have blackout, blackout, blackout. So, you know, so we actually will be shifting the sets in light as, mm -hmm. so as David navigates his way from, you know, let's say the day room to Alan's office, the walls actually move around him so that, um, so that, that it's almost a seamless shift. I think this is so cool. It's set in a children's mental hospital, so we have a maze to show the character's anguish. And so there's no sets like break down, build up a new set, break the, that set down. We'll move flats in around the stage to, to cover and expose different parts of the set that's been set up. It shows what David and Lisa are feeling and how been moved, they've been moved around and never really been in control of where they go and what they do. Go ahead. Talk! Talk! What do you want to talk about? I haven't seen you in so long, you don't understand well, that I'm handing out all that crap. We'll do what you want to do. We know that we'll do what you want us to do, and we always have. You don't talk, you just toss words around. Uh, what lesson would I take from it? Um, that it is possible to get better. That, uh, no matter what is ailing you, uh, through time and 
friendship and uh, love, you're able. Um, it is it, it is possible to get better and to become not cured but happy almost. Because David is a very unhappy character, and by the end he sort of finds his own place. And uh, without giving too without much without giving without giving it away, okay. there is a relatively happy ending. <laughs>